out, even as you see those that are on the other side enjoying and progressing. You are not alone because in Psalm 73, it happened to one of our kind. They say that they were almost giving up when they saw what was happening to those that were on the other side. The Bible says that he all, almost slept, but he was encouraged. In verse 17, he says, he was encouraged when he realized that the end of these people was destruction. Psalm 73. Is it up there? Okay. Yeah. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Praise the Lord. So in the times that we are living in, what we need is an understanding of, of, of what the Lord has in store for us, of what the Lord has said about us, of what the Lord has kept for us, of what the Lord has planned for us. He said the plans that I have for you are uh, what kind of plans? Plans for good. To do what? To prosper you. And to do what? And to give you her hope, yeah, and our future. So he has good plans for us. But we need to be convinced and moved to a dimension of understanding that which the Lord has in store for us. Bible says in Daniel 11, 32, that the people, which people? The people who do what? Who know their God shall do what? Shall be and they shall do. Are you among them? Do you believe like you are one among them? The people who know their God shall be strong. So it is paramount for each one of us to seek to know him. Paul said that I may. Even after writing so many episodes and speaking so much about Christ, he says that I may know him. In other words, he's saying, I do not settle where I am. I don't settle for less. I want to keep growing and growing in the knowledge of him. Because it's the knowledge of him that will be able to take us progressively to the next level. Because in this life, we need encouragement. And the only encouragement we need is in the word of God. When I say few. Everyone out there is trying to make ends meet. Yeah, they are trying to get what they can get to amass what they can amass on their side because the times are challenging. But we need to know that we have one who owns everything. The Bible says in Psalm 24, the earth belongs to who? And the fullness and the world and the things that are in is saying this, if you went to heaven and you walked in to the department, the land registry in heaven, and you did a search, you told them, please search for me. There is a parcel that is called earth. They will search and they will tell you it is registered under God. Praise the Lord. It says the earth and the fullness thereof, the world and everything that is, are you in the world? Are you there? Is your, uh, your, your plot in Kamulu there? Yeah? Yeah? It's there, isn't it? Whose is it? The Lord's. He owns everything. That Lord, that is our Father, the owner of everything. Until we understand that, we'll keep struggling. We'll keep worrying. We'll keep asking. You know, the other... Uh, the other day I was listening to a guy from Uganda and he was saying that the situation in Uganda is so bad that uh, there is a big number of poor people and they say that in Uganda the poor are not sleeping because they have nothing to eat but at the same time the rich are not sleeping because the poor are awake when I say few and so there comes a nation here of people that are not sleeping. The poor are not sleeping. The rich are not sleeping. The poor are not sleeping because they have nothing to eat. The rich are not sleeping because the poor are. And so the nation is not sleeping. Then I, but I said, 
If you know who you belong, you will sleep. Ah, you will sleep. Because he protects you. He protects, he says that he protects us. Jerusalem is surrounded by mountains. So the Lord does what? So when you go to sleep, you sleep. When I say fewer. And you don't worry because he shall provide. He shall provide. Let me speak to us briefly about the wealth of the believer. So that I bring you to understand that your wealth is in God. Your provision is in him. All that you seek is with him. Buona sefewa. Paul, in the book of Ephesians, is speaking or writing an episode to the church in Ephesus. And when you look at the episodes of this great man of God, and like how we do it today, where we write a letter and sign at the end, Paul signs his letters at the start. When I say few. He tells you who is writing and what kind of person so that you can decide whether to read or not to read. For us, we write and then down there, that's when we say it was Jotham. Praise the Lord. Can you take us back to Ephesians 1? It's there. Thank you. The Bible says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Paul is saying, I did not put myself in this thing. I did not work for this thing. I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Is the introduction of the letter. Imagine you are reading a letter and then it says, it is Paul who is writing. And I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ, not by my own decision, but by the will of God. Today, are you able to say or to write there, John, or uh, uh, I have a Paul here. Paul, an intercessor of Jesus Christ by the will of God. Mm. Yeah. Julius. An administrator and businessman of Jesus Christ by the will of God. In other words, it's whatever you are doing by the will of him. Are you able to, you know, convince us and boldly say, I do this by the will of God. I, son of God, by the will of God. Praise the Lord. He has gotten to a dimension of understanding that this thing is by grace. Now he writes to a church in Ephesus and he says, To the saints who are where? In Ephesus. And what kind of saints? Faithful in Christ Jesus. They are not just saints. They are faithful saints in Christ Jesus. He's writing to faithful saints. In Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. What does Timothy 1.12 say? If you can uh, give us that. Timothy 1.12. It says, And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, because he did what? He counted me. What? He counted me faithful, putting me into so you are being placed in the ministry is a function of your faithfulness. God counts us faithful. Praise the Lord. He counted him faithful and put him in ministry. Paul has that understanding. He knows who he belongs. He knows who he is. When you ask him, who are you? He can tell you. I am Paul. And when you walk through, you see him. Uh, uh, just jump to Romans 1. You see his introduction in the episodes that is written to the churches. He says, Paul, a born servant of Jesus Christ, called to, to be an apostle. 
separated to the gospel of God. Chosen, separated for the purpose of the gospel. He knows that. So it's a dimension that we need to come to, to understand that when we accept Christ, we are changed. We become a different people. We don't remain the same kind of person that we were. We are changed. We become the sons of God. And we have to walk in the dimension of him. Praise the Lord for the praise of his name. He says, uh, take us back to Ephesians chapter 1. He says, to the church in Ephesus, to the faithful saints in Ephesus. What does he say? Grace to you and what? Peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That order is very important. Grace and what? Is telling you that you cannot have peace without grace. It is grace first, then peace. Grace to you and peace from God our Father. When we are doing the benediction, what do we say? And the love of God. And the what? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace comes from him. It is by grace. We don't work for it. It is by grace. Let me tell you something. Even that time, when you decided I'll be born again, and the word was preached, and you decided, I want to believe. Let me tell you, let me tell you what happened. I hope I'm not jumping myself. That God had chosen you and called you into his kingdom. And when that time came, by grace, he put in you the faith to believe him. So it's not like he chose you and then with your own energy and faith you believed. He chose you and the word was preached. You heard the word and he put his faith in you so that you can believe. He loves us so much. It is by grace you have been saved. So he says grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Then my key text is verse number three. Let's go to verse number three. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has done what? No, I heard some people say, Who will bless us? Is it who will? Who has? It has already happened. So we are blessed of the Lord. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us without much. Every spiritual blessing. Now, now, now listen. Listen to me. The Bible says he has blessed us. So we are not waiting for the blessing. He has done it. We are blessed. But as though that is not enough, the word tells us he has not just blessed us, but he has blessed us with every. Praise the Lord. So there is no blessing that you think of that the Lord has not released to you. He says, I've blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Now notice the kind of blessing. What type of blessing? Spiritual. The blessing is spiritual. What God has blessed us with is spiritual blessings. Because whatever comes out physical started spiritual. The blessing we enjoy spiritual started, uh, we enjoy physical started spiritual. Praise the Lord. When you look at Psalm 103 verse 3, take me there. Quick, media guy. Who forgives... You know, verse 1 to, uh, 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 okay, give us verse 1 to, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do what? Forget not all his. 
Now, verse number three. Who does what? Forgives all your forgives all your iniquities is a spiritual blessing. And who does what? Who heals all your diseases. That's physical. You can say I'm healed now. I can see that. But can you see the forgiveness? Huh? Because I'm saying whatever comes out uh, physical is fast spiritual. And that's why the word says he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Because that confirms to us after receiving the spiritual blessing, this physical blessing is assured. Matthew 6.33 Seek ye first which kingdom? The kingdom of and his and what? What are these things? What are these other things? Physical blessings. But first seek what? Which is spiritual. First spiritual and then let's go back to Ephesians 1. Oh, hallelujah. With every spiritual blessing in the heavenly. Now look at where the blessings are placed. They are not here. The blessings that we've been blessed with are where? Not just in the heavenly places because every other, even demons, can access the heavenly. Where are they? In Christ. In heavenly places. In? Now you ask yourself, why did God have to put our blessings very far? Heavenly places in Christ. Let me tell you why. The first time he entrusted those blessings with the man, our brother Adam. <laughs> You know what he did? He messed. Yeah? He, 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 was, he, was, he was allocated the Minister of Finance and in charge of resources. Yeah? But there came the devil and he started negotiations. No corruption started a long time. He started negotiations. And before long, he had already been shortchanged. Huh? The resources were gone. When you go to Matthew 4, uh, the enemy appears and says to Jesus, now this kingdom has been given. Uh -huh. when, when did he receive? It was with the, the, the first man, but he missed. Yeah? So God says, now I'm going to do a reshuffle. Quickly. And the minister of finance goes to my son, Jesus Christ. The financing of the kingdom will remain with Jesus. Because if I entrust this with man, he can do what he did. He should change everything. The blessings went. Yeah? Everything went. Yeah? So he was to put it in the heavenly. And not only heavenly, he went ahead and put it in. Hmm. Colossians 3. Ah, oh, goodness. Thank you, Lord. The Bible says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what? Those things which are where? Above. Where Christ is sitting. At the right hand of? Najua sangini tunafikiria right hand of God ni God ameka and then on this side. <laughs> it is not on this side of God. Right hand of God. Right will of God. Seek those things which are above. Where Christ is sitting. He's sitting at the right hand of God. He's sitting at the position that has been placed by God. The right will of the Lord. Father, praise the Lord. He's seated at the right hand of God. So there are blessings in the heavenly places. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And, you know, out there, uh, people, the people of the world, I've, I had a man who said, there's a man called Tana, Lana Tana, he said this, that <laughs> a successful man, no, 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 how you, how you qualify a man to be successful. He said a successful man is a man who makes more money than the wife can use or spend. <laughs> 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 
And then a successful woman <laughs> is one who finds such a man. <laughs> but in the kingdom, success is according to our access to his blessings. So long as you have an access to his blessings, you have succeeded. Not about what men of this world call success. We have blessings hidden in Christ. Now, quickly, let me show you these blessings because of time. Uh, t- take me back to Ephesians, our anchor scripture, uh, three. We are, give me four. Now, let me give you a few blessings that we have in Christ, spiritual blessings. Blessing number one is that we are chosen in him. We are chosen in him. Verse 4, the Bible says, Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, we are chosen in him. That's a blessing that is in Christ. For him to choose us, For you to be chosen by him is a blessing. What does he call us in uh, 1 Peter 2.9? He says what? For you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. His own special people. That you may do what? Proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous. He has chosen you. It's a blessing to be chosen. Being born again is not by your decision. He chose you. He chose you. He's speaking to Jeremiah in 1.5. He says, before you were born, Before you were formed in your mother's womb, I did what? I knew you and did what? I sanctified you. Or I appointed you. I chose you to be what? And ordained you a prophet to the nations. So God knew you and he chose you. He knew you and he chose you. So you are a special son of God. The fact that you believed him and you said, I surrender my life to him. A blessing. A blessing. You are chosen. Somewhere in in Acts uh, 13, check for me, 1348. Paul is speaking and the people of God hear his word, uh, the, the, the word of God, and... Something happens. Is it here? Yeah, yeah, I think it's here. Can you give me NLT? NLT for that. So that I think that would, yes, it has the word. The Bible says, when the Gentiles heard this, the word of God, they were very glad and did what? Thanked the Lord for his message and all who were chosen for eternal life became which people? All those that were, Paul has preached. But it's not everyone that is believing. These are the kind of people that are believing. The Bible says, and all who were chosen for eternal life became believers. So for you to believe confirms that you are chosen for eternal life. Praise the Lord. It's a spiritual blessing. You have been chosen. Turn to your friend. Tell them, I am chosen. Tell them, I am the chosen of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are chosen. You are chosen of the Lord. Let me add another blessing which we would get in verse 4 or 5 somewhere there. Somewhere there, 4 or 5. The Bible talks of predestination. So, blessing number two, you are predestined. You are predestined. Verse number four, uh, 
uh, just in par, uh, verse 4, previous verse there. And he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Yes, 5. Having done what? Predestined us to what? To adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to who? According to the good pleasure of his. He chose you. The first blessing. Then he predestined you. We have been predestined. We have been predestined means that our, our destiny has been uh, 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 placed or uh, designed or agreed on before. There is a destiny for each one of us. But that does not rule out your self-will. You can be predestined, but then you choose otherwise. When I say fewer. So, God has given us free will to choose. He has chosen us. He has predestined us. But you can still find uh, uh, those that decide, no, no, no. He says he's not, he doesn't like to see the death of an unbeliever. Because he wants those that he has chosen to believe him. Praise the Lord. We are predestined. What does he say in Romans 8.28? Romans 8, 28 says, For we know, for we know that everything works together for good for those who love God. To those who are the called according to his. Now, 29 says, For who he for knew. In other words, those that he chose. He did what? He also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many. So you have been predestined. Your destiny is decided by God and is a bright one. He says our future. Oh God, praise the Lord. We read in Jeremiah 33 where he says, I know the plans that I have for and he said, what kind of plans? Plans for? To prosper you and to give you a future. Let me submit to you, brethren. Your future is bright. So long as you stick with him who holds the resources that you need. Jesus is the custodian of our resources. So when we stick with him, we have access to those resources. In, 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 uh, in, in John 15, in John 15, he says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man, is the vine dresser. If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you do what? In verse 5, you will ask. You will ask anything for, for without, verse 7, I think 7. Yes. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you Do you desire anything? Now, that thing that you desire is with Christ. But the currency to transact is your sticking with him. Your ability to abide with him. When you abide in him and you allow his word to abide in you, then you will ask what you desire. And it shall be done for who? For your neighbor? For you. Praise the Lord. He has predestined us. And those that he predestined, he also did what? Those that he predestined, he also called. Eh? We are, we are in Romans 8, 29. Sorry, sorry for the, for the speed. I'm looking at my time. Uh, for we for a new, he also predestined to be confirmed to the image of his son, that he might be firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he predestined, then he also. So look at what God did. He chose you. And placed a destiny for you. And after that, he called you. 
So he did not call the justified. He justified those that he called. Look at what he said. Those that he called, this he also justified. And whom he justified, this he also that is you in Jesus name that is you in Jesus name you have been chosen you have been predestined you have been called you have been justified you have been glorified there is a bright future for each one of us however much the surrounding may look and promising provided we stick with him things will turn out things will turn out well in the name of Jesus Praise the Lord. We need to know where our resources are. The kingdom of God is financed from that resource. In him. In him. Everything is in him. Take us back to Ephesians so that we uh, try to bring this to a close. Blessing number three, verse six. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Next seven. In him we have what? Blessing number three, we have been redeemed. We have been redeemed. To be redeemed is to be bought back. To be redeemed is to be bought back. When the first man messed everything, God has to, had to act a plan so that we can be redeemed, purchased back. And so he did it before. And so that when we begin to walk in this journey and we know that we have been purchased back, we will walk in victory. When I say fewer. Colossians 1.14. Colossians 1.14. The Bible says, In whom we have what? Redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins. We have been redeemed. Jesus Christ died on the cross to redeem us, to buy us back. So that we can belong to him as it was initially. Praise the Lord. It's a spiritual blessing. Our blessings are in Christ Jesus. Let me add something that I think in First Peter. Uh, let me confirm the, this uh, verse in First Peter 1. I pick it from 18. First Peter 1, uh, 18. Are we there? The Bible says, knowing that you are not redeemed with what kind of things? With corruptible things like from your aimless conduct received by what? Tradition from your... Every time we are running after silver and... With co corruptible things and these corruptible things are silver and it's corruptible but there is the incorruptible the currency that is incorruptible is that blessing in him when we have him we have all that we need because every resource that is meant to finance the kingdom was put in him the in him position. If we can remain in him, we will enjoy that we need, that we need to enjoy. Lastly, the for, forgiveness of sin. We are forgiven. We are forgiven. It said there in, uh, uh, if you can take us back there, in him we have redemption through his blood. We have been bought back. And we have the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace we can read colossians 2 13 as we bring this to a close because of time hallelujah what does the bible say 
and you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh did what? He has made a life together with him. Having done what? Forgiven you all trespasses. He did not just forgive you some, but he, forgive, he forgave you all trespasses. He has done a lot. He has done a lot for us. He, the Bible says, I think it's that same Colossians 1.13, check for me. He has rescued us. It was a rescue mission. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and done what? Conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love. He has rescued us. He has bought us. He has forgiven us. He has done great things for us. Oh, hallelujah. If only we can believe him and allow his word to penetrate our lives, to change us, so that when the word of God comes to you, it does some changing, some transformation, because he wants us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. We begin to have a thinking as he pre ordained for us, a thinking about him, a thinking about the kingdom, a thinking that glorifies him. Praise the Lord. My prayer this day is that we may begin to walk in that kind of dimension that will allow us to function for his glory. Praise the Lord. I'll kindly ask you to do this one thing. Stand on your feet and let's take one, I have three minutes, I'll donate you, to you two, so that you just tell the Lord, your word has come forth. I pray that, oh God, today, you may remember me. I pray today, Lord, that you may open my eyes to see that which you wanted me to understand today. I thank you, Master.